Okay, the whole service is going to be printed out for you guys, including the music, since obviously, how many of you have a hymnal in front of you? Okay, Zoe, that's not a brush for her face, you yeah. know, she doesn't need makeup. So, all right, so our service for today is uh, based on the service of prayer and preaching. And like I said, everything's included on you. And for you guys at home, uh, it's all on the Remind app that you can download. Um, so we make our beginning. If you're able, please stand. This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 through 8. They set out from Ephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him on the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all the, these words that the Lord had commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported these words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our gradual for today is, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate, and I will declare your greatness. Our next reading this morning is from Romans, chapter 5, verses 6 through 13. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Through perhaps for a good person, one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from what the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now we are reconciled and shall be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin was not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abound for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able, please stand for the verse. Uh, 
Alleluia. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Alleluia. Our Holy Gospel for today is from Matthew chapters 9 and 10. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of to, of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called him to him his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these, first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, pain, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, or a staff, for the laborer, laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. And as you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet. And when you leave that house or town, truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men. For they will deliver you over to courts, and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak, or what you are to say, or what you are to say with, will, for what you will say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsory is in the packet for you. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, Love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. For um, our catechism for today, we are going to do the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, with just a brief break in between them. We start with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn. Our text for today is from Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest, and send out laborers, or to send out laborers into his harvest. Here ends our text. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you, when you pray a prayer like what Jesus just told his disciples to pray, do you really mean, yes, Lord, send out workers in the harvest field. Just make sure it's not me. Send out somebody else. Any of you mean that when you say that? Honestly, come on. When you ask or, or when you know that there's something to be done or there's something that needs to to happen or there's somebody that needs to be talked to, do you pray to God to give you the words to say or do you honestly say, God, somebody ought to do something about that? 
or Terry can do it. Or you also have this wonderful gift of, and, and this is where I kind of wish we had you know, our old normal sized crowd back because some people would actually answer this honestly. When the church is doing something, how many people say, we are doing it, or do you say, they are doing it? We are doing it is the right response. But a lot of times it's, and this is something I hear all the time from people, it's, well, you guys are doing this, and it's somebody that's been a member here for so long, and they still don't see the church as them, but they see it as other people doing things. And so you get this constant thing of, well, you know, the church should do this. You know, the church should clean up the yard. The church should reach out to their neighbors. The church should put together packets for, for people to be welcomed into the community. The church should. The church should. The church should. And the people say that, meaning somebody else should do this. Because they don't identify themselves as the church. And I hate that identity stuff, you know. I identify as a skinny man, you know. The reality is different. But they don't take the identity of the church and make it their own. And what Jesus did to his disciples right here in Matthew is, he looked at his disciples and he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send out laborers into his harvest. And then right away he says, I know you just prayed that, and you're the answer. Um, for those of you who were here in person before worship, we got to listen to Matthew West's Do Something. And the, the song starts off with, I'm always angry about all of these things happening in the world. I'm angry about the, the children being sold into slavery. I'm angry about people going hungry. I'm angry. God, why don't you do something? And the part that they cut out on Caleb is the part of Matthew West's response of, I created you. And then he adds a little laughter in there. On Caleb, they cut out the laughter because somebody got offended by it. Matthew West put that laughter in there on purpose. Because that laughter, that little itty bitty giggle that he puts in there, well, I created you. <laughs> it's exactly what Jesus did to his disciples today. He told his disciples, pray earnestly for the Lord or for the harvest that he would send out workers into his harvest field. And by the way, go out into the harvest field. So today in the church, and in Bible study we talked a little bit about this, and we've talked about it for a couple of years now at least. We know there's a lot of things the church ought to do. There's a lot of things that we need to get done. There's a lot of things that need to happen in order for a church to survive. There's a lot of things now with the new reality of being online and having to be online and having to do things distantly. There's a lot of things that need people to step up. But we've gotten so used to in the church that who does the church work? You know, it's not the church that does the church work. A lot of people say, well, Pastor, go ahead. Or Lana, go ahead. Poor Lana. You know, she's got a lot of stuff on her plate. <laughs> but how many of you, when you say the church should do something, really mean, I'm going to do it on behalf of the church. And you still have this wonderful gift of Jesus sending out his 12 disciples, the 12 main disciples, which later on he does send out 70 or 72, depending on which translation you look at. Um, but he sends out the 12, and then he gives them these wonderful gifts, and he says, go out there and say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
And if you don't know much about the Bible, if you don't read the Gospels, if you don't actually pay attention, you miss the huge cue that Jesus is giving to the disciples. That repent for the kingdom of God is at hand was the message that was started by John the Baptist. So he's telling his disciples, the same lifestyle that John the Baptist had, that's what you get to have now. John the Baptist lived out in the wilderness. He was a, like, well, today we'd call it a hermit or recluse or whatever. He ate locusts and wild honey. I'd rather not. But what he did do was he was very bold about his proclamation. When John saw that the Pharisees were coming out of Jerusalem to be baptized by him, does anybody remember, and Terry, you can't answer this one, because I know you know it. Anybody remember what John the Baptist, baptizer, however you want to call it, what did he say to the Pharisees? Joe, you got it? Nope. What? Nope. He yells something at the Pharisees. Go ahead, Terry. Who warned you to flee, you brood of vipers? You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? You know, that gentle warning of, you know, oh, guys, it's okay. I understand you didn't understand. But no, he, he was bold. So he's, Jesus is telling his disciples, you now get to be as bold as John was in his proclamation of his gospel. Because after John's ministry came Jesus' ministry. And Jesus' ministry actually continued John's ministry of telling people, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Be bold, disciples. Be bold, church. Be bold with the gospel that you proclaim. Be bold with the mission that God put in front of you. Don't sit back. Don't pray to God and say, God, we need people to come and work. And then go home and sit on your couch with your clicker and play on your phone and expect somebody else to be the answer to the prayer. We've done that for too many years. And honestly, this is not a new thing for the church. And church, I mean, big C, ever since the beginning of the church, we've had this problem where we've had people say, well, the church should do this. The church should reach out. The church should feed people. And it ended up being, that means somebody else should do it because I don't want to get my hands dirty. So this is not a new problem. We as a Christian church have been working with this problem ever since the beginning of the Christian church. You look at the days right after the day of Pentecost and you've got the disciples and they are in charge of the food distribution, they're in charge of uh, leading worship, they're in charge of trying to get people to learn, they're in charge of the society of the Christian church. And because they tried to take over all that stuff and take on all that stuff, things started getting left behind. And so they said, it's not good for, the, for us to do this. It's not good for us to keep going on like this. And instead of taking one of the apostles and saying, okay, you are now in charge of food, food distribution. Anybody remember what they did? They appointed people from the church. They didn't ask for volunteers. That's the wonderful thing that we kind of failed to learn from that is they appointed people to be the first elders of the church, to be the first lay leaders of the church. And so they picked seven men to do it. They didn't really give these guys a choice. They just said, here, this is your job. Now go do it. And we've gotten so soft that now if we tell somebody, hey, here, this is your job, go do it. That person goes, huh, who are you to tell me to do anything? 
and then they walk away. So we have to look for volunteers and we put out sheets and we put out bags of mulch and rock right in the way of people so that they have to see it on their way into church until finally somebody says, oh, why is this here? I might be able to do something with it. But we've missed the point. The point of, that Jesus is making here is very simple. The world's ready to hear the message. The world is ready to hear the truth about sin, about death, about the destruction of those destined for hell. The world needs to hear about it. And so he tells the church today, the fields are white, the harvest waiting. Who's going out? And we get, get to answer. Here am I. Send me. We have this wonderful good news to save this world. We have this wonderful gift of the gospel that is the only way to salvation. And it's our wonderful duty to share that with everyone we meet. And we get this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit who comes alongside of us and he says, you can do this. And Jesus even says in the later part of our reading for today, you are going to be persecuted, you are going to be put down, you are going to have people try and destroy you. And he doesn't say, I'm going to get you out of that. But he says, when you are in the midst of the persecution, when you are being destroyed, when you are in front of those governors, don't worry about what you're going to say. The words will flow. And like we've talked about before, it does help to know the words beforehand, to know the word of God beforehand, and then let the Holy Spirit put it all together for you later but don't worry about what happens in the persecution because God's already given you the way through the persecution and that is the strength and the wonderful gift of eternal life and so our prayer today Lord Send out workers into your harvest field. And help me to know that I'm one of them. Amen. May the grace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Um, our service continues with the prayer of the church. If you're able, please stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are dealing with the weirdness of these times, for our struggles with dealing with the new reality that we have to face until all of these things pass us, and for all those who are making decisions for how to proceed, for those who are dealing with the front lines of it, 
for all those things that are going on right now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the unrest that we face right now, for the turmoil in our lives, and for the strife that is around our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the, prayer that, uh, the morning prayer from the Catechism. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and preserve you. Amen.